Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday here at Bible Tract Echoes. Those words, Tract and Truth, are the title we give to every one of our Tuesday broadcasts, and here's why. We are a gospel organization here. This radio program where we teach the Word of God is the radio arm of a larger ministry where we publish gospel tracts. Now, do you know what a gospel tract is? I hope you do, but just in case you don't, the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, and it refers to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. Gospel tracts are done in a very beautiful, handy fashion, easy to carry, but that way they can be readily in your possession when you meet people, even very casually, as you're out and about or at the workplace or whatever. So many times we have conversations with people where we're going into a store, coming out of a store, whatever the case may be, and we say hi and how are you to people that we really don't know. But in those brief conversations, often it opens up the opportunity for us to hand them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we don't actually have the time each and every day to talk and take the 10 or 15 minutes to share the gospel orally with everybody. So we find a way to extend our personal witness. And that's what gospel tracts do. Now, right now, I want to stop here and say I love hearing stories about how people came to Christ. And I really love it when those stories involved using gospel tracts. The story I want to tell you now is not mine. It came from a book entitled Evangelism Today by a man named Scott Dawson. Now, Scott Dawson teaches evangelism in local churches and Bible schools. And at one conference he was at teaching, after the evangelism training was given, the people were sent out in teams to practice what they learned. And as a result of those teams going out, here is one of the stories. And I'm reading now, quoting, one of our teams made up of three junior high boys was walking down the street in Jackson, Mississippi. They went to a home and the owner of the home told them to get out of the yard. When they got to the next house, one of the boys, and remember, these are junior high boys, one of the boys said that he had to go back to the last home and he asked his two friends to go with him. When they followed him back, the man in the yard exclaimed, I told you to get out of my yard. Well, the evangelism trio left, but as they did, one team member left a tract and asked the man to read it. Well, at the end of the street, this boy looked at his friends and said, we've got to go back and try again. Can you believe this? A junior high guy going back after being rejected twice already. But when they got back to the house, they found the man sitting on a chair in the front porch reading the tract. And as a threesome approached the man, he looked up and said, I was hoping you would come back. Would you please explain this to me? The book goes on to say that the rest of the story is the man received Christ that day. He went inside to his home, brought out his wife and his two kids, and all four of the family members received Jesus Christ that day. Oh, beloved, I love stories like that. So tell me, friend, will you let me give you three important traits of a person who is an effective gospel witness today? That's what I'm going to do. Stay with us. Get pen and paper. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to Matthew chapter 6. But first, let me tell you about a gospel tract. We have over 40 different gospel tracts, and I want to give you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracts, if you'll let me. At the end of the program, my announcer will be giving you our contact information. If you use one of those methods and give us your name and mailing address, we'll send you free of charge that sample packet. One of the tracks in that is this one, a would-be suicide. A would-be suicide. I picked this one 
one for a very significant reason. I just told you the story of three junior high boys. This gospel tract tells the story of a man who is ready to commit suicide. He's sitting in a restaurant. He's eating his final meal. He's actually got his gun with him, the revolver he plans to use to kill himself with. But while he's there eating his meal, he looks over and sees a 16-year-old girl. She does something that just, well, basically stops the man in his tracks, so to speak. As a result, he goes over and talks to her. That day, she impacts his life for eternity. This man, it gets right with God. This man does not commit suicide. He becomes a vibrant, a powerful servant of God. Here's a great gospel tract, a would-be suicide. It's amazing what young people can do. Now, friend, please, I want to give you this track along with the sample packet. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information or go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Let me read you some verses out of Matthew 6. Six, uh, chapter 6, verse 26, the beginning says this, Behold the fowls, the birds of the air. But now I'll jump to verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. Let me just stop, please, right there. Now, you recognize that those words are from the Lord Jesus and his sermon on the mount. And that sermon was directed primarily at those who were followers of Jesus at that point in time. It was a sermon on how to live a godly life while waiting for Messiah to establish his kingdom. It was also, by the way, makes good preaching for people like you and me here in the church age who are waiting for the rapture of the church. The principles on godly living are not uh, just for one era. Godly living principles are universal in their application. Well, Jesus uses the lily flower as an illustration to Christ followers. Let me tell you an earth-shattering fact about lilies. Well, Okay, maybe it's not an earth-shattering fact, but it's a profound truth because it's so, so simple. Here's the truth. Are you ready? Here it comes. Lilies grow where they're planted. Isn't that profound? Lilies grow where they're planted. Please tell me you're impressed by this. Lilies grow where they're planted. Dear gospel friend, you and I need to be like lilies. Oh, the flowers are beautiful to be sure, but they're only beautiful after they grow where they're planted. You and I can be beautiful both, yes, to Jesus Christ, but also to those around us, saved and lost alike, if we are blooming for Christ where we are planted. Let me ask you, do you think that man on the porch there in Jackson, Mississippi, do you think he thought those three junior high age boys were beautiful? I think he probably did. Those were the human tools God used to bring that man and his wife and his children to faith in Jesus Christ. They have everlasting life. They're going to heaven. Those three junior high boys were blooming where they were planted. So how do you and I bloom where we are planted? Wherever you are right now is where God has planted you. Where you are right now is where God wants you to bloom. Now, I say that knowing right now we have men listening to us, maybe some women, I don't know, but I know we have some men in prison listening to us. Man, you got to bloom where you're planted. Some of you are working in a job you hate. Perhaps the boss makes it a very difficult job. Bloom where you're planted. Dear lady, you're in home and you have three munchkins around you and they're just driving you crazy. You gotta bloom where you're planted. And dear pastor friend, I say to you and to me, we need to bloom as examples where we are planted, no matter how discouraging or upbeat the ministry is at that point in time. So let me just pass on. There are three traits to people who know how to bloom where they're planted for God. If we can't bloom where we're at right now, how in the world can we bloom someplace else later on? Now, here we are. Three principles. I'm going to state them very quickly. Number one is this. Be aware of your surroundings. 
be aware of your surroundings, especially the people around you. Number two, have an attitude of a servant. Have an attitude of a servant. Number three, be available to the Holy Spirit. Be available to the Holy Spirit. Let me just say some quick things about each one of those. Number one, be aware of your surroundings. We need to be aware of the surroundings. And by that, I mean this. You need to see yourself as God's servant everywhere you go. Now, it doesn't matter if you are going someplace because your boss, your human boss, has sent you there. That I understand that, but wherever he sends you, you're going there as God's servant. You are first and foremost God's ambassador. People matter to God, so be aware of the people that are around you wherever you go, because people matter matter to God, they must matter to us. Number two, we've got to be a servant, having the attitude of a servant. You know what Philippians 2 says, let this mind, this attitude be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We are challenged to be a person who has a servant heart. Serving others, even in very small ways, opens doors to making friends and opening doors to share the gospel, sharing the gospel orally or that, or maybe just through giving a gospel trend. We've got to have a mindset of a servant. I cannot tell you how many times I have been out and about seeing somebody having a little bit of a need, step in, help them meet their need, whether it's just helping picking up some cans of soup that they knocked off the shelf at the store or helping some dear lady wash her car windows when she's pumping the gas, whatever the case may be. It's amazing the conversations that open up and the gospel opportunities from that. We've got to have, as we said already, number one, we've got to be, excuse me, be aware of our surroundings. Secondly, have the attitude of a servant. And lastly, be available to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit prompt you. Now, for that to happen, you've got to know his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We've got to be able to hear the voice of God and discern it. For that to happen, we've got to be letting God's word impact us each and every day. And we have to be, well, we have to be prayed up. So be doing, as we, you and I are doing these things, we'll, we'll recognize the voice, the internal heart and soul prompting of the Spirit of God in our inner man when he nudges us to begin a conversation to step in and help someone. Be aware, be a servant, be available. So I ask you, dear gospel-loving friend, which of these three traits needs the most attention in your life, in your soul today? Perhaps you are listening today and you don't have any of these traits because you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Dear friend, the Bible is very straightforward with people, just like a doctor. Sometimes the doctor has to tell us very bad news like this. You have cancer, you have six months to live, or whatever the case may be. The Bible is very clear. All are sinners. You, friend, are a sinner that makes you an evil person in the sight of God. You may live better than me, but in the standard of God, you've fallen short and you're evil. Your heart's evil. There's only one answer for that. It's Jesus, God who came to earth to die on the cross to save you from your sin. Cry out to him, repent of your sin, receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.